Season 3, Episode 2 of Kitchen Nightmares focuses on a restaurant in White House Station, New Jersey called Flamingos. Fl Flamingos. Yes, that is a really good name. And it's run by Adele, her husband Bill, and their daughter Cheryl. But despite her name, Adele is not rolling in the deep. She's rolling in the debt. Thank you, I'll be at the Laugh Factory next week. And based on the footage we see at the beginning of the episode, she also has a bit of an attitude. I looked at some of the YouTube comments and people described Adele as toxic, a classic Karen, and an actual Disney villain. So let's find out if she's really that bad and if Gordon was able to save the restaurant and make them successful enough to stay open until today. It's explained at the beginning of the episode that Bill and Adele owned several previous restaurants that were successful that they ultimately sold in order to retire. But apparently retirement was too boring so they bought another restaurant and for some reason this one is struggling. We also see several clips of Adele screaming at her staff and telling them to shut up. And we're told that Bill, Adele's husband, does all of the maintenance and also works in the restaurant despite being 70 years old. In a cutaway Adele says, I can't think of anyone else that could help us but Gordon Ramsay. I mean, he cuts right through the shit, and we are in deep shit. This is a huge trope in Kitchen Nightmares episodes where, at the beginning of the episode, the owners are like, I can't wait for him to tell us what we're doing wrong. And then he comes and tells them that they are the problem, and they're like, fuck this guy. Gordon shows up in this goofy old truck that looks like it doesn't have AC, and meets Bill at his farm to talk about the restaurant. After introducing himself to all three owners, he learns that the restaurant is in deep debt and nobody knows why it's doing so poorly. After that, he heads over to the restaurant, which I guess is supposed to be themed after those junky tourist places in Florida, despite being in New Jersey. And apparently the name of the restaurant is supposed to be a combination of the words Florida and mangoes. After seeing the decor, Gordon asks Adele how drunk her daughter was when she came up with it. Next he orders some food and after getting the first dish he complains about it being way too spicy. As the second dish is going out, one of the chefs mentions that it's nearly a week old and the head chef responds, whatever, send it, just send it out, send it out. Unsurprisingly, Gordon spits it out immediately. The last thing he orders is a filet mignon and Gordon is surprised to find out that at this restaurant they serve it on a cart in a roof tile. Here's the face he made. But despite all the presentation, after trying it he says, that's the toughest and most chewiest filet mignon I've ever tasted in my entire life. Which is quite a claim from a guy who's probably eaten quite a few filet mignons. Next he goes back into the kitchen to talk to the head chef and Cheryl, and he learns that the chef doesn't like the food, but the owners won't let him change it. And then Gordon decides to watch a typical dinner service to see what other problems the restaurant has. The first problem that he identifies is that their menu is way too big. Having a menu that's too big causes the whole kitchen to get behind on orders and the customers are not happy. That causes Adele, the kitchen staff, and the head chef to get frustrated and once food does start going out, a lot of it starts coming back to the kitchen. After that abysmal service, Gordon gets all the staff together to do the usual staff meeting where the employees tell their boss how they really feel. The head chef speaks up first and says that they need to shorten the menu. But Adele's reaction is, are you kidding? And she tells him that since he's only been there for a month, she doesn't yet know how well he really cooks. And then one of the servers, Isabel, complains to Adele that she doesn't like her and that she constantly tells her what to do despite her knowing what she's doing. And that kicks off a huge argument. And Adele tells Isabel, you don't know when to shut up. In a cutaway, Christy, one of the servers, says, they don't want to hear opinions. We're still going to get treated like garbage. I don't think they're going to change. And next, Gordon lets the head chef come up with one of his own dishes to be put on the menu as a special, and he also lets Bill cook his own meatloaf recipe. They cook both of the dishes and let everyone try them out to see how they are. In a cutaway, Adele says, I liked it, but I would never order meatloaf out. Never. I can't believe the chef Ramsay wants meatloaf. Which, no offense, but I think that's an unpopular opinion. I've been to several restaurants that serve meatloaf, and I've even ordered it myself. When it's done well, it can be really good. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. At the next dinner service, they implement the two specials, and people who order them seem to really like them. But the normal menu items aren't as popular. When one customer complains about their fish and asks to talk to Adele, she comes over to the table and says, Complaints? What are they? And she definitely sounds annoyed. The customer tells her the mahi is dry and overdone, and she says, So you don't want it. Okay. And quickly takes the dish and heads back to the kitchen. And as she's walking away, she says under her breath, Bastard. In a cutaway, she says, I know when the customers come in you have to be positive, but they're liars. I can understand being frustrated with people not liking your food or something, but I don't get why so many owners from Kitchen Nightmares seem to believe there's some grand conspiracy against them and that the customers are lying to try and hurt them. 
After the service, Gordon gets the staff together and tells them that the specials were a good start, but the restaurant needs to change more drastically. He then tells all the staff to get a chair and bring it with them outside, and the whole time Adele is just looking very confused and concerned. They then go outside, and at Gordon's direction, they put all the chairs, menus, this goofy alligator statue, and even the restaurant's sign into a pile in an open area, and they set everything on fire. Based on her reactions and what she said in the cutaways, Adele and to a lesser extent Cheryl are clearly distressed at the sight of all their decor burning. Especially this alligator. They were particularly attached to this alligator for some reason. But Bill doesn't seem to mind. Adele gets so upset that she actually starts crying. Gordon tells her not to cry and that everything will work out, but Adele is not completely convinced. In a cutaway she says, Now I have regrets. I don't know what's to come, so we'll see. And of course, next, it's time for the restaurant redesign part of the episode. The first change that's revealed is that they changed the restaurant's name to The Junction, which I think was a great idea. But Adele has some reservations. Gordon asks her opinion and she says, interesting. And in a cutaway, she says, I'm not happy about the name. And then the restaurant interior is revealed and we can see that they opened up the interior a lot and changed the raw bar into a milkshake bar. Bill and Cheryl both seem really excited about the changes, but when Adele has asked how she feels about it, she bluntly says, I don't like it. I hate blue. And Gordon simply responds, unbelievable. In a cutaway, Adele says, how can you be positive about something you hate? I want to throw up. I hate it. Hate, hate, hate. And there's a clip of her walking around looking at everything and she just says, ugly. But then through tears, she says, I love what we had, that's all, and this is a very drastic change, and I really don't like it. I regret it right now, but I want to see the menu, you know, and see how it's all going to come together. And see the menu she does. The head chef loves the new shorter menu and says, there's no other place around here like this. But when Adele's opinion is asked, she says, I mean, this is very limited, very limited menu. And in a cutaway, she says, this menu is so limited, it's not going to be successful. People are not going to come in with that small, small menu. Gordon tells Adele that she has to stop being sentimental about the past, and if not, she should just close the restaurant down now. But she still doesn't seem convinced. And next is the part of the show where they cook the entire menu to let the staff and owners try it, and everyone seems to really like it, except for Adele, who after trying the salmon says, Salmon. Ugh. Tastes like a fish. As they're getting ready for the relaunch service, Adele seems more than a little aggravated. She takes away one of the cook's jobs and starts making the dessert herself. And then when Gordon asks her to smile, she says, I'll be right out. And as she walks by Gordon, she gives him a light slap on the cheek. In a cutaway, she says, I'm very nervous. It shouldn't be to my liking, it's to what the customers want. I don't know if they're going to like this. Literally, the second the first customers walk through the door, Adele says, I really want to go home. As the service gets going, Bill and other staff go tell Adele that the customers are liking the new menu and the new restaurant, and her response is, well, screw them. Then Adele goes over to some of the customers who tell her that the place is great and they love it, and she responds by saying that she hates it. It's really funny because they're all happy and positive, and she just shuts them down and instantly bums everybody out. Gordon comes looking for her and seems to walk up just in time to hear her say, he says it's gonna work. How stupid can you be? With an astounding amount of patience, he pulls her aside and tells her that she can make it work if she just changes her attitude and that her negativity will rub off on all the staff. But Adele reiterates that she's not sure and she wants to leave. In a cutaway, she says, I would never run a restaurant like this. I want to go home. I would rather close the doors. And then there's a clip of Gordon literally banging his head against the wall. But Gordon talks to Bill, who talks to Adele, and he seems to convince her to be a little more positive. After that, we see Adele in a better mood, and she's smiling and being friendly with the customers. And at the end, she says, It was a success. People love the food, and I feel that there's hope. Finally, Gordon gives the staff an end-of-episode pep talk, and he basically says that the service was a success, and that they need to continue to work hard. And the narrator also gives us an update. He says that after the filming of the show, Adele slipped back to her old ways and redecorated the restaurant. But she did keep the shorter menu, which is probably the most important thing. I don't know why she thinks people want to dine with tacky tropical junk, but at least for me, I'm willing to put up with an ugly restaurant as long as the food is good. And they also did a revisited episode where Gordon went back to see how they were doing. In the revisited episode, we're told that the restaurant is doing great with double the business that they had before, and Adele is in good spirits and her staff reports that she's nicer to them. But she does admit that she made some menu changes. 
And it's also revealed that the head chef who was there during the filming of the episode is now employed elsewhere due to some kind of disagreement with the owners. Based on that, it seems like the business was doing well despite Adele straying somewhat from Gordon's changes. Maybe she learned from her time on the show and was able to implement her own changes, or maybe the show gave them enough free publicity to get people in the door. Either way, the big question is, are they still open today in 2023? Well, the first thing I found is a brief article from NewJersey.com, and it was apparently published about a week after the episode was filmed. In the article, Adele is quoted saying simply, it was hell, about going on the show. And she also told the interviewer that, they're going to stick with his modifications, which include a name change to the junction for at least the next week. Only a week? And the next thing I found gives us some more insight into how the owners felt about going on the show. This article is from New Jersey Monthly and it says, The Seppies have mixed feelings about the changes. They like the new name and most of the new menu. The decor, not so much. They quickly stowed the blue and white chairs, which they, and many customers they say, thought evoked a diner, in favor of sedate, dark wood models. They found the crew's workmanship shoddy. They put carpet down that wasn't even glued. It was thrown, says daughter Cheryl, who manages the restaurant. People were tripping on it. The family also was redoing the show design Junction logo, which they liked, but it made people think we're a Chinese restaurant, Cheryl says. Response from customers so far has been mixed, with some regulars put off, not that there were ever enough of them, and some new patrons attracted by the changes. The family doesn't know what to expect when the episode airs on Fox this fall. Ask Adele if she regrets sending that SOS email, and she has to think for a second. We knew we had to make a change, she replies. I would never have gone this drastic. We built everything. I didn't see knocking it down, but he tried to show us that this is a business decision, not emotional. Based on that, it sounds like they aren't overly thrilled about having gone on the show, but they are somewhat positive about embracing change. As far as the quality of the renovations, I've always wondered how they were able to make changes overnight like that. Obviously, this is just one person's opinion, but it does seem like it would be really hard to get it all done in one night and do a really good job. Both this article and the previous one were written before the episode even aired, but the next update is from much more recently, 2018. And this Gazette Review article says that in April of 2011, the junction, formerly known as Flamingos, finally shut its doors for good. According to this reality TV updates website that never provides sources for any of its claims, there would be no shame if when the junction closed they said that the owners wanted to retire or that they just wanted to do new things. No. The owners of the junction, i.e. Adele, put out a statement blasting kitchen nightmares for the changes, claiming that they overbooked reservations to overwhelm the staff, got customers to complain, put the team up to bugging Adele till she looked petty, just to hype up the show and make them look bad. But after diligent searching, I could not find this supposed statement that Adele put out anywhere, so I would take that with a massive pile of salt. Another claim that I've seen made here and in some other places with no sources is that after they shut down the restaurant, Bill and Adele retired to Florida. And after doing all the research, I came across several things that convinced me that they are living in Florida. I opted not to include those sources in the video for privacy reasons, but I'm pretty convinced that at least that claim is true. But I wanted to try and figure out what people thought about the restaurant to maybe get a better idea of why it ultimately shut down. So let's look at some reviews on their Yelp page. They have 4 out of 5 stars, which is pretty good. But there's only 7 reviews, so not a massive sample size here. 4 of the reviews are 4 stars, 2 are 5 stars, and only 1 is 2 stars. First, let's read this 4 star review from 2011, which was shortly before they closed. He writes, The Junction is a very nice family restaurant that is also very suitable for business travelers. What you get here is a small town restaurant that serves a mix of Tex-Mex dishes with American comfort food. I understand this show was featured on an episode of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. The food here was excellent. I will agree with the reviewer who said that they did tend to rely a little too heavily on sauces, which sometimes took the flavor away from the main ingredients, such as the vegetables. The menu itself is fairly large. I am guessing the simplified menu from the show went by the wayside. It looks as though they made the menu into a Tex-Mex menu, but left many of the staples from the show on it. The owners of the restaurant are extremely nice people. It is a daughter and her parents who own and run the restaurant. We went on a weeknight when things were a little slow and felt as though I was having dinner with a family. So based on that, it does seem like Adele pretty heavily modified the menu. And next let's read the only two star review which is from 2009 before the episode aired on TV. It says, I read about this place in New Jersey Monthly Magazine. Gordon Ramsay had gone in and reinvented the place. The TV show will air later this year. So my wife and I tried it for lunch. It was okay, but we were not impressed and do not plan a second visit. The food was a mixed bag. Menu is a bit limited, 
burgers, grilled chicken on focaccia, portobello burger, and seven entrees. Prime rib, meatloaf, baby back ribs, mac and cheese, glazed salmon, chicken zaro, stuffed chicken breast, and chicken jubilee, saute of chicken and shrimp. My wife had a salad to start, followed by the salmon. She told me that the salmon was very good. I had the French onion soup. Okay, but ordinary. I followed with the chicken zara, which was tasty, but looked like a train wreck on the plate. It is listed on the menu as sautéed chicken breast stuffed with prosciutto and mozzarella, marsala wine sauce. As served, it was two slices of chicken with cheese between the slices, set on a bed of mashed potatoes, surrounded by a moat of brown gravy with bits of ham and mushroom. Enough gravy for Thanksgiving dinner. But as I said, it was tasty. It would go over great in a school cafeteria, but did not belong in a restaurant. I'm sorry, but I have to mention, this guy said that the menu was limited and then proceeded to list like 20 different things. And then he said the food was good and then gave it two stars because I guess it didn't look pretty enough? This guy is a hard man to please. Anyways, I read all seven reviews and what surprised me was that nearly all of them were aware of or had seen the Kitchen Nightmares episode and still gave it four or five stars. Several even said they were expecting it to be terrible but were pleasantly surprised. From what I've seen in the past at least, usually people who write reviews that have seen the Kitchen Nightmares episode are more likely to be negative and to try and find things wrong. A lot of the times people who have never even eaten there will leave a bad review just because they didn't like the owners. But based on how positive these few reviews are, I think the food was probably relatively decent. If I had to give my armchair speculation about the restaurant's closure, I would be willing to bet that it was just a location issue. They only have seven reviews despite being featured on national TV, and based on what their first reviewer said, it seems like White House Station is in a pretty rural area. Or it could be that the restaurant was doing fine, and the owners simply closed the doors so that they could finally retire. Or it could be that those seven reviewers are totally wrong and the food was terrible. The world will never know. One more thing that I found that I thought was kind of interesting is this Etsy page that has an owner named Adele Tsepi. In case you're not familiar with them, Etsy is a website where you can sell handmade products, basically. I wasn't sure if this was really the same person or not until I read the About section. Hi, I am recently retired from the restaurant business and find myself very bored these days. Finding Etsy has been such an inspiration. It brought back many memories of sewing my children's clothing, which was many moons ago. In between restaurants, I used to decorate clothing for all ages, so now I find myself wanting to do it again. Etsy has reactivated my creative juices, and so here I am. I hope you find my unique one-of-a-kind clothing a must-buy. Happy shopping. That has to be her. Unfortunately, she doesn't have anything for sale anymore, but based on the about section, it sounds like she was selling some kind of customized clothing or something. Anyways, that is the story of Flamangos. They survived for two years after the filming of the show, and despite them making some changes to the menu and decor, it seems like the food was probably relatively good. But for one reason or another, they closed the doors anyways. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. 